and we'll get going. How's that? You ready? I'm ready to light this candle. Seven seconds, it says. I think I'm ready. I'm on there. Let's go ahead and get this show started. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Welcome to this week's edition of the Wednesday Drive on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday all across the good old U.S. of A. This, uh, what is it, June today? What is today? 21st? Is it the 21st? It is the 21st. So happy 21st to you out there. Let me know who's watching on Facebook Live. Thank you very much for doing that. We had a good time up in Minnesota. I'm going to tell you about that. First things first, show's brought to you in part by a couple good friends of ours, Rupert's Roost and Peace Turkey Calls. May all of your turkeys roost in peace. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on uh, Facebook and look up Roost in Peace Turkey Calls uh, and Todd Rupert, and you'll see. And Sportsman's Warehouse stores all across the good old country. Thank you for all of them for helping us bring the outdoors to you each and every week here on the radio and on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. First thing, uh, thoughts and prayers to our friend Darren Christenberry and their family. Um, I just got back home uh, late last night and... Uh, found out Darren's father passed away a couple days ago. So uh, for all of you that are out there that are uh, into archery and bow hunting, I'm sure you know who Darren Christenberry is. He's one of the top shooters in the nation. Uh, he's also part of the uh, the uh, Hunting for X's show that I do with Nathan Brooks and Darren every Monday that you can listen to on the Outdoor Call Radio app. So if you like bow hunting and archery uh, or 3D shooting, uh, going to ASAs and IBO events, that's a show you should be listening to. Uh, hunting for X's. It's on every Monday on the Outdoor Call Radio. One. But anyway, uh, thoughts and prayers to Darren. I know how it is to lose your dad. I lost my dad when he was 58 years old. Almost coming up on 30 years. Wow. Uh, but it it never gets easier, I'm telling you. It just doesn't. So, uh, Darren, God bless you, buddy, and uh, I know how you feel. Trust me. Uh, what a week. I uh, had a great trip up to Minnesota, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, if I, I wish I could have took all of you with me. Uh, we had a great time. I got to see my buddy Gary Pack up there at Bear River Guide Service. And uh, Gary, and when he's not bear hunting uh, for me, uh, guiding me, <laughs> he's helping me catch them wallies, man. You know how much I love my wallies, right? Uh, who's watching on Facebook? Let me know who's. Say hi real quick so I can say hi to you. Uh, just uh, had a really good trip up to the Pines Resort. I want to thank Chad and his family and Donna and uh, uh, JC, everybody out there that was just, they were just phenomenal. The weather was awesome. I got a little bit of rain on me, one, one uh, like at 11, 30, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I got a, like a 25, 30 minute shower at the most. And it was just, uh, it was just beautiful weather. Good walleye chop, caught a lot of fish. Um, and uh, the northerns, I caught some northerns. I caught a bunch of wallies, caught some perch. And uh, I, I got a funny story. You, you're not going to believe this story, but I, I'll tell you this story here in a second. But uh, just I want to say thanks to Gary, uh, the winning, uh, thanks to Sean and all the gang over at the Winning Trading Post. Uh, that's where we got our shiners, uh, our spotted shiners. I think that's what they're called. And uh, I actually got uh, some uh, some fishing line and some uh, some food, and everybody over there. That's right there by uh, Lake Winnebagosh, Winning Trading Post, and Fred's Bait right there in Deer River. Sean and his family own both of those, and uh, I uh, took advantage of that while I was up there. Uh, orange fishing jigs were just nailing them, man. They were killing them. Now, Gary Gary was giving me a whole bunch of crap because he said that the orange jigs were just not uh, not going to do it. And uh, I want you to listen to this. So we went out the first day, and we got into a bunch of uh, 10, uh, 12, 13, 14-inch walleyes which is awesome because those are going to be uh, bigger walleyes next year. So there's a great brood stock in Lake Winnie right now. That's It's great to see those smaller wallies, actually. So that's awesome. So uh, we went out and we got some snakes. Uh, they call northern snakes, if you don't know what that means. Uh, that's what, another nickname for for the uh, for the uh, northern pike is snakes. They call them that. And uh, caught a bunch of perch, too. But uh, the walleye was great. And then I went out the next morning by myself, and I caught a bunch of snakes and uh, some perch. But I didn't catch a walleye. 
and then Gary came over and uh, we got into some fish and stuff and and uh, anyway so we're, we're we're on this other side of this par uh, part of the Lake Winnie that I like we like to fish and and uh, we're, we're drifting so I'm switching I'm switching jig heads uh, Gary was using a, a white and a pink uh, jig head and uh, we caught some fish with that and then it, it was just a they were they were kind of finicky a little bit but uh, anyway I went ahead and uh, I went ahead and uh, tied a, a, an orange one on and I caught it I started nailing some fish and stuff and I said see the orange crush is crushing it it's killing it Larry or Gary he goes yeah 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 so we did pretty good there, and then uh, the next day we went out, and uh, it was uh, it was pretty slow. It was a, uh, it kind of got flat that day, um, and then uh, the next morning the the wind came back in, and we had some good chop, and the, we were we were finding fish, but uh, you know you had to you had to be patient with them. And then we started drifting, so we're drift fishing, and uh, <laughs> this this is so aggravating. You know I got uh, trika rods on, right? Trika, I love and those. I love those trika rods. I can actually feel my minnow burp when I've got that minnow on the jig. That's how sensitive those trika rods are. I'm, I mean, I, I, honestly, I couldn't feel the minnow burp. I'm just exaggerating a little bit, but um, I could honestly feel the bite better than I ever have with that all carbon rod from tip to to the grip. Um, I actually, I caught way more fish than I usually do because I, I remember I complain about that all the time on the show. I miss so many fish because I think I'm on the bottom, but it's actually the, the walleye bite I'm feeling. Well, I was really feeling the bite with those, with those carbons. So anyway, we're, we're fishing. You're going to love this. So I got, I, uh, Gary told me that my reel was too big. My spinning reel, he goes, you need to go down to a 25, uh, 25 reel. And I said, okay. So I went over to Winnie Trading Post, and I bought a 25 size reel when we when I came back in from lunch the day before. Spooled it up with some six pound mono, and uh, put it out there, and got it. We're down fishing, and uh, we're just minding our own business, just drifting a jig and a minnow. I got the orange crush on, and and uh, next thing I know, we got a bull, a boat pulls up alongside of us, right? Well, it's the game warden. So the game warden comes in. He's got a red Lund boat and stuff. He goes, hey. How you boys doing? Any fish? And uh, just said, no, nah, it's kind of slow right now. And he goes, all right, I need to check your license. So, okay, I said, okay. Now, I always want to make sure that I, you know, I try to be very polite to uh, our game wardens and our law enforcement folks. I mean, I, I mean, they go, they got a tough road to hoe uh, dealing with some folks and the way the thing, the way the society is right now. I just, uh, they don't need any more guff for me. I always try to be super polite. So I said, not a problem. So I set my, I put my rod down and I leaned it up against the side of the boat, right? And uh, I reach over to my tackle bag and I unzip my tackle bag. My permit's right there. I grab my tag and I hand it to him. Just handing him my permit, I hear chink, 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 plunk. And I look over and my rod is disappearing into the lake. My brand new Trica fishing rod and my new reel. Bloop, in the water and it, Larry, Gary just starts rolling and I said that's not funny man that's my baby and the warden goes oh sorry I said yeah thanks a lot warden appreciate that and uh, he goes well I, I got side scan I'll make a swipe he didn't make no swipe he didn't even look he he goes okay you guys are good to go and I said rah, 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 rah. and I was kind of muttering in my breath so I got my other trike rod out and I tied an orange jig on it and I said you know that's just Gary's just he goes, man, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that, Dan. I said, shut up, Gary. <laughs> uh, well, folks, I'm telling you, I was so disgusted. My brand new rod, man. So somebody's going to get a helic of a snag. They're going to be drifting or, or they're going to be back trolling shed wraps or rapalas or whatever. And uh, I had a ton of line out. So somebody's going to snag that and get himself a $400 rod and reel. Oh, that was, I just... But here, here's the here's what's really funny. So I, I the biggest fish up until then I probably caught was maybe 13, 14 inch wally, okay, and, and maybe the same thing for northerners. I caught some decent northerners, but uh, good eat, you know, the good eaters. They were really good eaters. So I'm sitting there. We five minutes after that happened, Gary went back and we started our drift again. I tied that orange crush jig back on. I put a one eighth uh, ounce jig on, and I threw it out there. And I didn't have it in the water for more than, I don't know, a minute. And all of a sudden, I felt that chink, that little uh, tap, 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 tap. So I raised my rod, and I could feel the weight of the fish. So I just I just set the 
hook and I started reeling it in and my rod just bent. My drag was going zzz, going out. And uh, I got it. And Gary goes, "You got a big, you got a big snake on there." I said, "I don't think so." And I got it in. It was a big walleye. And uh, um, and uh, that that walleye ended up being 25 inches, 25.3 inches long. Really nice walleye, right? So we we go back and start to drift again and come back. I hook another one, 24, 24 and point three inches, and uh, and uh, I got two I got two slammers. And I put them both back. I put the first one back, and I was going to keep the other one, because um, I, you know, I, I don't. I, he, Gary goes, no, they want you to keep one. So I said, all right, I'll keep this one. And uh, anyway, we went back again, and I hooked another one, and I lost it. So I, I had three. We got into a big school of big wallies, and uh, and I said, you know what? That's the lake saying she's sorry for losing my four hundred dollar rod and reel. And Gary just kind of laughed at me. I said, yeah. Cause I, we, that man, I, I just love that lake. I, I, every time I go up there, knock on wood, I catch some really nice big fish, and uh, and the people just just could not be nicer up there. So, whoever wins that fishing trip next month, when I draw the winner uh, for the Big Pines Resort fishing trip to Lake Winnie, that you're going to stay where I stayed, you're going to fish where I fished, uh, and you're going to get to experience all this yourself. So, whoever wins that, I'm going to be really really happy for them. Just if the game warden comes over. Real, you're right. I told Larry Mack, I called Larry McCoy, I said, hey, Curly, you're not going to believe this. He goes, what? And I go, I told him what happened. He goes, well, you big dummy, just why didn't you reel it in? I said, because I didn't want him had to have to wait. I didn't want him thinking I was being rude. He goes, R you always reel your rod in, Dan. I said, well, from now on, I'm, I've got the Larry McCoy rule. And I'll just say, excuse me, sir, or ma'am, whoever it is, I'm, I've, I've, got to, I've got to adhere to the Larry McCoy method. I have to reel my rod in because I don't want to lose another rod and reel. So, but yeah, it just I'll, that one's. It'll be a while before I get over that one. It's pretty funny now, but it wasn't funny at the time. So, anyway, so hey, uh, Chad, uh, Chad and his gang, they got uh, Pines is great. They got uh, they did some updates on some of the cabins, which I didn't know. I really didn't think they needed to do anything. They they, they were fine last year, but they really are smoking nice now. Uh, they got a new restaurant inside the Pines Resort too. Um, they got your bait stations and everything there. Uh, I mean, they've really done some nice work up there. They got a great boat slip. Uh, so whoever wins that, they're gonna. If you bring your boat up there, he'll have a slip for you. And uh, just do me a favor, whoever wins, and I'll, I'll probably tell you when when I pull your name, whoever wins. Just make sure you take care of them, and give them a nice tip because that's a that's a heck of a trip, and you're just you're gonna have a great time up there. And. Uh, <laughs> will do thing. Oh, I, I know who that was. That was my buddy Hunter Chapel. Thanks, Hunter. If you're watching, thank you. The Crappie Connection. That's my buddy. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Hey, I got some uh, pheasant news I want to tell you about. So let me let me go ahead and take a real quick break. Let me get to my thing. I'm going to take a real quick break, and when we come back, I got to tell you if uh, if you missed the raccoon story, I'm going to tell you about that too. They had a raccoon law change. Um, I talked about it right before I left, but I had a bunch of people asking me questions, so I'll tell you about that. But we got some good pheasant news uh, from the Iowa DNR, so I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay, no flippy floppy. Stay on Facebook Live and on the Outdoor Call Radio app, and I'll be right back. Are you into hunting, fishing, camping, or tailgating? If you are, we'd like to introduce you to Arctic Ice. Arctic Ice is a brand What's new up, everybody? beverages and camping supplies, cold and fresh. Can't believe I lost my rod and reel. Arctic Ice Packs are a rugged ice substitute that maintains low temperature longer than a bag of ice and does not have the slushy mess that can contaminate what's in your cooler. If you like to hunt or fish, look at the Alaskan Series or Arctic Ice Packs that will keep your game or fish at 34 degrees for three to four days. If you're wanting to really freeze things up, try the Tundra Packs. Who's all out there tonight? And fish at dry ice temperatures for the travel back home. For tailgating or camping, try the Chill and Brew Packs. They'll keep your beverages of choice at frosty cold temperatures four times longer than what a bag of ice can. If you want your cave, fish, or camping goods to stay fresh and cold as possible without the mess of regular ice, go check out Arctic Ice Packs today. Heading on your next adventure and looking for some snacks to take? Why not pack a snack that tastes great, gives you protein, and is easy to pack? What's everybody having for dinner? Soldier Boy starving. He is slow smoked in small batches. Boy, Jenny made me some uh, poached eggs and hash 
when I got home yesterday, that was good. I don't know if I've ever had that before, but uh, hash brown hash. She did a good job. It was good. She learned how to poach eggs while I was gone, so she had to show off a little bit. They also donate to troops that are deployed serving our country. So next time you're looking for snacks from home or on your next outdoor adventure, please remember to reach for some Soldier Boy beef jerky available at Sportsman's Warehouse. Soldier Boy Beef Jerky, outstanding taste that keeps you satisfied in the field. For more information, please check us out online at www.sbjerky.com. Hey, America, when you barbecue, cookies is the one. Lots of flavor, lots of goodness, thick and rich, lots of fun. Hey, America, when you barbecue, try cookies, barbecue sauce for a treat. Cookies, barbecue sauce, is the barbecue sauce America loves to eat. Trails are not always easy. That's why your boots need to fit and perform when you're outdoors. Itasca Footwear has been helping folks on their adventures for over 40 years. Itasca learned over the years that using only the highest quality materials and hardware is the way to make footwear for the whole family in all situations. Whether you're out elk hunting, chasing moose or whitetails, riding snowmobile trails, or ice fishing in sub-zero weather, Itasca Footwear will provide you not only a great fit, but comfort for all-day adventures. Itasca has sizes and styles for the whole family. You want to give them the same comfort and fit that you look for in footwear so everyone can enjoy their day. Look for Itasca footwear, trusted by millions of customers at most major and family-owned retails. For more information or footwear styles, please go to www.itascabrands.com. Itasca footwear, they will keep you on the move. Watch me see darkness falls and we all pray. All right, welcome back to the Wednesday Drive. I hope everyone's having a great Wednesday afternoon all across the good old U.S. of A. Thanks for everybody listening on the app and watching on Facebook Live. I appreciate all of you very, very much. All right, the weather model forecast bumps in Iowa pheasant population. All right, we're going to get another bump. Fabular winter and spring weather much across the good old state of Iowa is expected to benefit pheasant hunters this fall. I told you, man, we don't get all that rain and all that stuff. Uh, man, oh, that was nice of me. Uh, it helps out. So according to Mr. Todd Bogenschutz, who we really like Todd, Todd's a good guy with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, he said, given the statewide information, our weather models predicted a fe- pheasant number of populations will likely be higher for the fall of 2023 hunting season. How about that? Higher than last year, huh? All my pheasant upland buddies? Oh, that's a... There will be likely more regional differences given the tougher winter in northern regions and more favorable conditions in central and southern Iowa. Statewide snowfall from December through March averaged one inch above average, but the northern third of Iowa and the central region saw significantly more snowfall, likely reducing hint, uh, reducing hint survival in the northwest and north central regions where total winter snowfall exceeded three feet. Conversely, the th- southern third of Iowa saw very little snowfall all winter, about one foot, and hen survival should be excellent in those regions. Southern Iowa's mild winter will likely lead to higher quail numbers as too. I did hear some quail uh, in one of my spots. I, I, it was nice to hear those bobwhite whistles, I'm telling you. Uh, let's see. Even with the regional fluctuation, the best pheasant densities will likely still be in northern and western regions of the state. Every model comes with a caveat, and the spring nesting forecast is no different. This prediction is based upon weather data and can be wrong. Uh, you're never wrong, Todd. The August roadside survey is the best gauge of what the upland populations will be this fall. They'll start doing those uh, those roadside survey routes. They do that every year from August 1st through the 15th, and uh, they they do 218 30-mile routes, and they just drive around and see what they see on the gravel and stuff when they're out there trying to get off the dew and everything off of them in the morning. So uh, once we get that in, we should know about September 15th. Uh, we should know the survey results on that. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of that. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, new rules and laws changes address raccoons create your open round season. I'm telling you right now, folks in Kansas and Missouri are jealous of Iowans right now because they want this done in their states. I've talked to 
I don't know how many hunters on the way up to Minnesota and back, people calling me saying, can't believe we can't get this done in our state. How did Iowa get this done? I said, well, I think they just listened to the, the farmers and the hunters. Because we, I mean, we've been, we've been griping. I mean, face it, we've been griping about the uh, raccoon numbers for what, five, six years now? Uh, I mean, everywhere you go, the numbers are out of whack. And I mean, it's just not good for anything. Uh, changes are coming soon to Iowans. Uh, raccoons will be the focus of a bill approved during the 23 Iowa legislative season along landowners and ten allowing landowners and tenants to dispatch raccoons causing damage to their agricultural property outside the city limits. Landowners may shoot or trap raccoons using cage or dog proof traps. A license is not required. Uh, Governor Reynolds uh, signed that bill on July, uh, will sign that bill, becomes effective on July 1st. Uh, so uh, you don't need to notify the DNR before shooting or trapping. The new rules developed by the Iowa Department, Department of Natural Resources and approved the, uh, by the Natural Resource Commission of the Iowa DNR allows for year-round hunting and trapping of raccoons on private land. While the raccoon season will be continuous open during that time of year, outside of the fur harvester season, only firearms, cage traps, or dog-proof traps are legal methods of take. During the fur harvester season, trappers may use uh, any lawful traps normally allowed during the trapping season. Hunters or trappers pursuing raccoons on private land they do not own are required to have a full fur harvester license so make sure you pay attention to that new raccoon laws are currently in effect so you can go do it now it says how about that and i told you about that i had a great meeting uh gary peck uh introduced me to a man uh up in minnesota his name's don sherman uh he is uh, a native uh native american elder up in uh right there uh in ball club lake uh in minnesota and I'm going to have him on the Unknown Files show. We got a great Unknown Files show tonight. We're going to be we're going to be talking to Scott Taylor. Scott lives out on the uh, out in the Pacific Northwest, and he uh, he's a hunter, and he had an interaction with something that he just uh, well he said that uh, he said that uh, it, it had to been Bigfoot. So we're going to hear his story when we uh, do the show tonight at seven o'clock. And uh, he loves talking hunting, so we'll maybe we can talk a little elk hunting and stuff like that too. Uh, cause, uh, I like to see that. Well, oh, thanks Anita. I just, uh, I just got a thing from Anita trying to win that fishing trip. I appreciate that. So I'm looking forward to tonight at seven and, uh, we'll see what's going on there. So, uh, I got some big news coming from, uh, Trika rods. I can't tell you right now, as soon as I get the okay, I will give you the, I'll give you the thumbs up and I'll tell everybody on the shows cause you're going to want to hear the news when I can tell you. It is going to be exciting. Exciting. So, uh, what did a did everybody have a nice Father's Day? Uh, I knew uh, it was uh, I was away, but uh, I did hear from one of my kids, uh, my daughter, sixteen. Yeah, I said, "Hey, did you forget something?" Whatever, Dad. Happy Father's Day. It's all right. Wait till her cell phone bill comes due. I'm gonna say, "Well, whatever, hon." Yeah, that's. A, I can remember being sixteen. That was a long, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, trust me. Oh, so hopefully you had a good Father's Day. Gary, I know there are a lot of folks up there had a good uh, good Father's Day. Hope you did out there too. It's always good. So we'll be uh, doing the show Saturday morning, 7 to 9, as usual, on 1350 ESPN. I got Andrew on. Uh, we do have... Uh, we got. Um, I've got some fall hunting packages contests we're going to do. So here's, the, here's what we got coming up on contests. So... I've got to draw the winner for the uh, Pines fishing trip, and whoever wins that's going to get a four-night, three-day stay at the Pines Resort. Uh, they can use that August through October. And September, Chad said, the fishing's just off the hook up there. So that's when I would probably go in September. But that you can do from August to October, he said. And then uh, whoever wins that's going to get a brand-new track of fishing rod of your choice. Uh, they're going to get a $200 gift card to Bojangle Baits. You're going to get a brand new grizzly cooler for the boat, a pair of Itasca hunting boots, and some Arctic ice stuff. So it's a great fishing package. I will draw the winner of that the last Saturday in July. How about that? Okay. So, and how do you, oh, all you got to do is listen to the Outdoor Call Radio app. All you got to do is just go to your phone. If you got an Android, if you got an iPhone, and go to your app store and just download the Outdoor Call Radio app. It's right there. I'm showing everybody on Facebook. It's free. To download, it's free to listen, and I've got a bunch of great shows on there for you. Every day has got three or four different new shows. Tuesdays are all fishing shows. Um, i got some new shows coming on uh, that haven't aired yet. Uh, we got some new uh, uh, new media partners 
that are going to start airing some programs. So those will be on here in a few weeks. I'm excited about that. Uh, but just download the app. It's free. Tell your friends, family. But uh, listen Monday through Monday through Friday. See, I'm not even making you listen on the weekends. I'm doing the I'm doing the the contest Monday through Friday. So all you got to do is listen for an hour or so, and then bam, you all. Uh, and then when you hear it, just email me outdoorsdan at mac.com the phrase, and I put you in the drawing. And uh, I will draw, the, and that's, you know, I try to make it as easy as I can, you know, so. But uh, we'll draw the winner of that. After that, we're going to have some fall gear grabs uh, to get the, some, uh, I'll probably have four or five gear bags or gear grabs or whatever we're going to call them to give away. And, uh, and we got a new show coming up in September I'm working on called Buck Talk. And uh, I'll try to have some giveaways and stuff. And I'm thinking about giving away an, uh, one of my, I'm thinking about giving away a brand new Omnia bow. Um, I, uh, I'll let you know, I'm trying to think how I'm going to do that. Uh, but, uh, I just stay tuned and, uh, you'll get a, uh, someone's probably going to get a chance at a brand new elite bow here in August or September. So, uh, we'll do that. Or should I hold it for Christmas? Should I do it for Christmas? Maybe, maybe I'll do it for Christmas. That'd be a nice, wouldn't that be a nice Christmas present to get a brand new bow? Huh? I think it would be, I'd, I'd be happy with that. I would be happy with that. So I uh, don't have fishing reports. They're not out yet. So I'll have them Saturday. And I told you about that. Uh, the Western Hunting Hub is doing great. I appreciate everybody listening to that on Thursdays. That'll be on tomorrow along with uh, Victory Drive Podcast and Tom Rowland's uh, fishing show. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. So that's cool. Anybody got any questions? How come nobody's messaging me tonight? Is the, is the messenger not working? It says it's working. I got comments on. Hmm. Wonder what's up with that. Can you message me? Is anybody listening? I got. I know I got. I got a bunch of people listening. I can see how many people's listening right now. But I. I don't know who's listening. So anyway, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about it on Saturday. How's that? I'll ask everybody on Saturday what you want me to do on the bow. If you want me to give it away in August or September. Or should I give it away on Christmas? So, but we got some good stuff to give away here in the next couple months. So, and I do that because I don't mind giving back to all you. Uh, we got the uh, Pure Whitetail Bash coming up in two weeks. I'll be in Ohio and uh, try to do the show live from there if I can. And uh, and uh, other than that, I think I'm all caught. Oh, August nineteenth. August nineteenth. Put that on your calendar at six p.m. start. I believe that's a Saturday, right? August nineteenth. Is that a Saturday? They're going to have an outdoor day at the uh, iCubs, and yours truly is going to be the host. August 19th, that's it, Saturday, 6 p.m. I'm giving away a $300 gift card to Sportsman's Warehouse that night. I'm giving away a brand-new 75-quart Grizzly cooler, three $400 cooler, and a $500 outdoor stand package. All you got to do is come to the game and come by the booth. And uh, if you haven't downloaded the app, I'm going to ask you to do it. If you have already, if you show it to me on your phone, I'm going to let you just put in for the drawing. So that's all you got to do. I'll be there right by the main gate, Andrew and I. And Andrew is going to be throwing out the first pitch. I told him to let Andrew do it this year because I did it last year. And I'm getting too old to run out there. I don't think I could top last year. I made it all the way across the, the plate and I had some zip on it. So that was a good thing. So, I don't know. All righty. Nobody's got any questions tonight. Everybody's just listening. All right. I'll be back at 7 o'clock with Mr. Scott Taylor on the Unknown Files show talking about the big guy. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, man, I, I, uh, I'll put some pictures up. Well, I already did. If you go on Facebook and look, I'm, when I met Don Sherman, he, showed, he had uh, 10 or 12 tracks, castings of footprints, big footprints. It, it was pretty cool. Um and you know what? His wife and his, uh, his girlfriend Andrea, they're going to send me one. Um, he didn't have a, he didn't get it uh, done in time. He's going to make me a copy. Isn't that nice? I'm going to have my very own Bigfoot copy print. I'm excited. I'm going to put that proudly right here in the studio, right over there. I'll have a Bigfoot track. Huh? So that's good. All right, I'm going to get out of here. You guys be good. Thank you for listening. If you got anything you want me to talk about, you got anybody you want me to try to, to you got an event coming up? If you got uh, you got somebody you want me to talk to, you know, just email me, outdoorsdan at mac.com. Uh, my email is always the same. Or you can just message me on Facebook. I'll get back to you. Give me a, a day or so, but I promise I will get back to you. 
Other than that, I will see everybody on 7 o'clock tonight on the Unknown File Show. Until then, God bless you and have a great night. Watch me sway, darkness falls, and we all pray, hope and fall, the light of day, down into the river. All right, everybody, I will see you at 7. Have a great night. Thanks for listening today for the Wednesday Drive. Told you it'd be fun, it'd be worth listening to. How many times you get to hear somebody lose their rod and reel over the boat? Brand new one, too. Brand new one. Thank you. If I don't talk to you at 7 tonight, we'll see you on Saturday. Have a great Wednesday night, everybody. Thank you.